Hi everybody, my name is Nick Justician. I teach virtual production at Drexel University. And in this video, we're going to take a walk through the process of getting to hear a fully articulated mendehuman, uh, starting from here, you know, an actual human being in front of a camera. So the process we're going to use is a technique called photogrammetry, and I'll be using the uh, capturing reality software, uh, Reality Capture, and uh, Reality Capture is owned by Epic, and it's a very inexpensive approach for uh, processing photos and creating 3D models from those. And of course, if we can photogrammetry model ahead, then we can use the resulting model in Unreal Engine with the MetaHuman Identity plugin to uh, generate a, uh, a really nice likeness in uh, MetaHuman Creator. So let's start with the photography session itself. Um, in general, with photogrammetry, uh, you're going to want to take a lot of photos, and uh, so it helps to be able to browse them. I'm using a software tool called XNView MP. This is uh, open. I'm, I'm not sure if it's open source, but it is free software. So I'll include a link in the description for that if you'd like. And uh, in this se session, we shot a about a hundred photos uh, going all around my head. So I'm sitting still with as blank face as possible. Um, this was done quite a few years ago, actually, um, at the time we were using Agisoft Metashape instead. Um, but the uh, the overall principle is is the same today, and so thankfully I, I have these photos and can still uh, create new 3D models with it. So one of the things to note about this session is that um, it, it is being done in the studio, so you can shoot these photos uh, with really any imaging device, right? So you can use a cell phone if you want, and you can use natural light. Uh, but for this shoot, we really wanted to optimize this as much as possible. So we are using a SLR camera. Uh, these photos are 24 megapixel each, 6,000 by 4,000. I think we're shooting with a uh, lens set to about 55 millimeters. And um, in this studio setup, we actually have uh, four different lights set up. So here in the front view, you can see there's two highlights in my eyes. And so there's two lights in front of me. And then on these off angles, you can see that there's a pair of matching uh, lights uh, behind me. And all of these lights are strobes. So they fire a single bright light as a flash of light. Uh, they are uh, the light only lasts for a split second, like a thousandth of a second or even less. And as a result, the photos have virtually zero motion blur whatsoever, um, even with a handheld camera. And so that's one of the big advantages of using a strobe. You can see here in the background, I mean, the room looks dark. It was actually fully lit. It's just that the camera's exposure settings are matched to the strobes. And as a result, the natural light really barely registers on the camera. And so strobes can be really helpful for um, doing photogrammetry of people because uh, you're going to have to walk around a lot to get a full-sized human uh, photographed enough times. Again, I think we shot about 100 photos here. Uh, and so the uh, the strobe duration actually eliminates motion blur. So I think the shutter speed here is like 200 of a second, maybe a 250th of a second. And that's really just a, um, as fast as you can go and still be in sync with the strobes. And uh, we also used a uh, narrow f-stop on these. And I, I can't remember if somewhere in here we have that actual data. I think it was like f11. Um, Here's exif data here, and let's see if we got, all right, there we are. So exposure time, uh, 250th of a second, F11, yeah. And so there you go. There's some of that extra information about uh, these photos. And so uh, another thing we're doing here, and it, this is uh, a little bit of a more specialized uh, set of equipment, uh, but you, it's readily available for most photography stores, and we're what we're doing here is using cross polarization. So on every one of these lights is a uh, sheet of polarizing uh, plastic or, or gel, J G E L gel. So uh, let's just say that this gel on this light is polarized vertically. Um, all three, I'm sorry, all four of the lights have the same gel on it. They're all polarized in exactly the same direction. And then the lens 
taking the photo also has a polarizing filter on it. However, it's polarized in exactly a perpendicular opposite direction. So if this is polarized vertically, the lens polarizing filter is polarized horizontally. And what this helps do is knock down the specular reflections. So you'll notice that there's very little shine on my face in these photos. Maybe some extreme uh, angles are giving us a bit of highlights. And of course, you know, the gels are not 100% perfect. I mean, we're, we're not using a uh, calibrated optical setup, but you can see that there's very little reflection or shine on my face for the most part. So this really helps with both um, the texture, uh, being able to grab the texture for uh, human skin, but also for photogrammetry because it won't get confused by uh, lots of different changes in highlights in my face as the camera uh, goes around me. So I'll do another video later on that uh, shows a little bit more about this. In fact, these days I'm uh, typically shooting with a ring flash. So instead of using multiple strobes in the room, a single flash that's actually wrapped around the lens of the camera, and that's cross polarized with the lens opening. And um, that gives us, you know, a, a nice little uh, cross polarization, very diffuse look. All right. So the only other thing, of course, to point out is that the photogrammetry series is done by taking photos from several different angles. And so the, the photographer walks all the way around me, all the way around the back, comes around the other side, and then we offset vertically as well. So uh, to help enhance the, the three dimensionality that's being captured, uh, the photographer started out at one level and then crouched down lower for a second orbit all the way around. And then we did a few close-ups of my eye just to be able to get a good look at my uh, uh, eye textures. So, uh, so that's the photograph session itself. So the next step is to go into a software tool that converts these photos into a 3D model. So let's take a look at the reality capture software. So um, this is Epic software for doing photogrammetry. And it's a really simple process. In fact, I'm going to use mostly default settings. So just starting the app and I'm going to go ahead and bring in new inputs, uh, which each input is just a photograph. So I click on the new inputs. Here's my directory of photos and I'll start from the first photo. Just hold the shift key and select to the last photo of my head. Now there's a few photos in here where either there was a strobe misfire or the camera wasn't quite pointed in the right way. So I'm just going to control select those. So this one, there was no strobe, another one without the strobe. Here the camera's pointed down in my hands. And I think there might be one more that's just not particularly useful. Um, Maybe I'll just uh, eliminate this one here. And also this one where the light in my head really kind of overlap. And so that, um, let's just eliminate those two. All right. So, uh, for the most part, the rest of the, the photos should be pretty viable. So I'll click open on that. And then we should get all of those photos in here. And so we should be ready to uh, process those. So I just click on this three view. Yep. There we go. So here we go. We have all of our photos visible here. Um, I'm just toggling between single view and three view, etc. So here's the photo that's selected, for example, and this will be my 3D model uh, once we get to uh, process it. So I'm just going to go ahead and align images and I'm just actually going to just run this full process here. So we'll uh, let reality capture do its thing and I'll uh, just uh, fast forward so you can see how this processes. Okay, so the process is finished. It took about just under nine minutes to complete on my computer. Of course, your results are going to vary depending on the speed of your computer, the number of photos you used, the quality of the photos, the resolution, etc. Uh, one real important thing to highlight, by the way, is that never, ever, 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 ever should you crop or reframe the photos that you captured from the camera. Uh, the calculations here are absolutely critically based on the original relationship between the pixels at the center of the lens, etc. And so any cropping is going to completely ruin this calculation. So you can, you know, convert from raw format to JPEG or um, maybe even make subtle color adjustments. I, I, 
wouldn't necessarily be recommending uh, color adjustments, but super important is that you do not crop or reframe at all. The photo should be uh, the original framing straight out of the camera. So with that, let's uh, refine our 3D model and get it ready for Unreal. I'm just going to switch to uh, the one plus one layout here. Uh, right mouse button lets me orbit a little bit. Uh, middle mouse button doesn't really do anything. Uh, left mouse button sliding. I can do some more sliding with uh, two mouse buttons. Okay, right mouse button. All right, so, um, you know, it's a less than perfect model. We've got uh, there must be something out here that's uh, been solved for the the top of the head's a little awkward you know the the collar is going to be a distraction really I want to get this down to just the head that uh, we're going to use for the modeling in Unreal with the MetaHuman plugin. So what I can do is go over to here and uh, go with my view menu let's go to tools and choose lasso and so this will let me select different geometries. So I'm just going to left click and drag and select anything and everything that might be back here. And then I'm going to filter the selection. So that'll remove any geometry that was inside that lasso that I don't need. So now I'm going to do the same thing here at the top of the head. I think I'll push forward with my mouse wheel and just kind of trace along here and select as much of this as possible i think i got it right right mouse click let's go ahead and filter that selection there's a couple spiky bumps up there um, not critical that we eliminate all of this stuff uh, it seems that the the plug-in is smart enough to recognize some things this is two mouse buttons uh, right. select this geometry and filter so you can see that um, again when I'm in lasso mode the left mouse click uses the the lasso itself and so if I want to uh, kind of pan and move around my scene I can hold both mouse buttons down to do that right mouse button still orbits still some spikiness up here and I'm just going to go ahead and lasso around that and filter that out. So another thing I can do to eliminate some of the excess is to adjust this reconstruction region that's around the model. So I'm just going to go ahead and set the reconstruction region. It gives me some controls to alter that. And each one of these little uh, controls here at the faces let me compress this and I really just need this around the head give a little extra space around there there we go so that's fine so that'll be our reconstruction region and let's do a uh, set the ground plane and this is going to let me rotate the model so I want the nose facing forward um, the best view to do this would be switch from perspective so I click on the view option go to top and now the top of the screen in this top view is the front so this way I'm going to rotate so my nose is facing forward I can uh, get in here and move left and right a bit and let's take a look at a side view and this is uh, pretty good. So from top and sides, we're looking in the correct way. And again, I could choose front and I should be looking at my face. Wonderful. Uh, and let's go back to perspective mode here. And uh, let's go back to our tools and choose the lasso again. And we want to get rid of, I'm just right mouse clicking to orbit, uh, two mouse buttons to move. I want to get rid of anything that's like below my neck and even some of the shadow and all that. So again, lasso is selected. So I'm just going to drag, select around all here and then click filter selection. Okay. So there we go. We have a, a pretty complete head uh, with very limited excess geometry. 
Looks like there's something down here. Just select that. Filter. And we should be pretty good at this point. So with this, I'll uh, export this model as an FBX. So we'll just go to the uh, Capturing Reality logo and choose Export. I'm using the Autodesk FBX format. And then finally give it a name. I'll call this Demo Head V01. And out it goes. I'm going to keep all the defaults and say OK. As a quick side note, my license for Reality Capture is set up for unlimited processing. So I can process as many photos as I like at whatever resolution, and I don't have any uh, you know, per image charge uh, related to my exports. If you are using a price per image license, then uh, you'll be charged at the time of uh, actually using the data for export uh, and such. So. Um, this particular example, again, I have uh, in this case like 80, let's just say 86 images, and they're 24 megapixel each. So the cost of this model, you can calculate it in advance. Uh, there is a uh, CapturingReality.com and, and price per image or PPI credit calculator. So um, you can go here, and I'm going to calculate based on the number of images. In this case, it's 86, and the megapixel per image is 24. And so uh, this model would have cost about $1.30 uh, in US dollars. So it's just something to be aware of. It's very nominal cost uh, given the resolution and quality of the output, but it's something to factor in and it's something that you can check in advance uh, before you actually uh, have to pay or anything like that. Okay, export is done. I'll hit close on that. Took about two and a half minutes. And now we're ready to use this model in Unreal Engine. So let's go over to Unreal 5. Of course, you'll need that MetaHuman plugin installed. I'll have a link for the Unreal Engine um, demo of that. It's a six minute tutorial. It's super clear, so uh, no reason to rehash that. So the plugin's already installed. For the purposes of this, I'm just gonna create a new folder to store this demo. So I'll call this demo and then MH ID for MetaHuman ID, and I'll go in here, and then this is where I'll import that FBX model. So I'll just right click and choose Import to Game, and look for that demo FBX. It should be in here, demo head right here, and open that. So this will bring in that 3D model. We'll just click on import with all the defaults. Okay, import's done, took about 30 seconds. Uh, these are just warnings, and they're not errors, so I'll let them go. Um, one thing that I like to do, not absolutely critical at all, but I like to get rid of the specular highlighting in the 3D model. So I go into the material, just double click the resulting material, and uh, hold the S key down and tap the mouse, the left mouse button once. It gives us a scalar parameter, default to zero, and feed that into specular. So now there's not going to be any specular uh, values at all. So we shouldn't get any shine in the material here in Unreal. So we can close that and uh, say yes. I'm going to save that change. And what else are we going to do here? We want to make sure while we're at it, we might as well do a save all. And yes, save all these new assets that were created. And now we'll put the MetaHuman plugin to use. And as soon as the save is finished, we'll just do a right click in our content browser. And we'll go to MetaHuman since the plugin is installed. And we're going to choose this blue icon, MetaHuman Identity. That starts a new identity. I'll just call this uh, demo and uh, MHID. Hopefully that is okay, even though it's the same name as the folder. And double click to open up that window. Do an automatic login. And then what we're going to do immediately is just click components from mesh. That's all we need to do. Here I'll just type in the word demo. It'll 
filter down to the assets and, that we have. And uh, here's the demo head. So I'll select that. And that brings that 3D model into our plugin. Uh, while we're here, I'm just going to go ahead to uh, body and choose the medium male. I actually have more weight than this here, but you know, that'll do. And then I'll click on neutral pose and we'll want to set up our neutral pose. Uh, according to the tutorial, it works best with unlit. I've got my mesh selected. I'll tap F to fit. Alt, click and drag here to face the uh, camera. Uh, per the tutorial, we'll change this field of view to 20, so we get a less wide-angle distortion. Uh, zoom out with my mouse wheel here, try to fill out the frame. We want to make sure we don't get too, too close or too far away. We want to try and maximize the use of our frame. So there's a little space at the top, a little space at the bottom. Everything's blank. And we want to try and make sure that we're looking as straight on as possible. And I'll just go with this and we'll go ahead and promote the frame for tracking and track this frame. With that tracked, we're ready to, to solve for our metahuman identity because again, I already selected our body type. So we'll go ahead and solve. And that only took a few seconds. So in the A view, we have the neutral pose. In the B view, we have the template mesh. So we can look at that template mesh, maybe hold L and rotate the lighting. And that's looking pretty good. So we're ready to upload this. Now, when this gets uploaded to MetaHuman Creator, it's going to uh, retain the name of the asset that we created here. So I'm just gonna click and save the asset. This saves all the work that we've done here locally in the Unreal project. And then we'll use the MetaHuman to, uh, mesh to MetaHuman button here to send this up to the MetaHuman creator. Okay, that took less than a minute and it says that MetaHuman is now available. Let's uh, say okay and take a look. Okay, so here in MetaHuman Creator is the results of our scan. So we will, of course, need to edit this to, to make it a usable human being. So I'll go ahead to Edit Selected. And while I'm at it, I'm just going to go ahead and add a T-shirt. And I like to wear black shirts, so I'll make it a black shirt. And I'll put on a pair of jeans and some sneakers. We'll make those black too. And we can hit custom mesh to take a look at what's going on with the face. Uh, I also like to make sure if I can try and get the, the skin tones, eyebrows and hair as close as possible before playing around with the sculpting very much. So skin, I'll go ahead and assign and we'll Make an adjustment here. Here we go. Bring a general skin tone in here. That should be pretty close. Um, texture as well. It actually dramatically affects uh, the look of the face. So you can see, for example, um, like the lips do subtly change shape depending on which of these uh, textures are selected. So uh, this is not a continuous uh, blending. Uh, it looks like a slider, but in fact, it's more like a selector. We're, in, we're just selecting from a variety of different available textures. Uh, I think I'm going to go in here and find something that's pretty close to... Oh, that'll work. All right. So um, also like to put in some hair, so go for head hair, even though I don't have very much. Uh, the tough thing is that, you know, there's an option here that's uh, buzz cut and actually probably closer to being what my hairline is. Um, but I usually wear my hair a little longer, so I'm, I'm going to go with this. Admittedly, this is more hair than I have, but uh, we're doing okay with that. So I'll just use that. Um, let's see here. Do, 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 do. Looking around, what anything else? Oh, um, since we're here, I'm just going to go ahead and also add some salt and pepper to my hair and maybe darken up that gray a little bit. There we are. 
And uh, there we go. I mean, so uh, another thing that we can look at is um, adjusting the eyebrows. And I think I'll go with this. And again, add some salt and pepper to the eyebrows. Let me increase the roughness a little bit. Okay. So there we go. It's actually a little bit of a kind of looks like a younger version of me. Uh, one other thing is the eyes will make a big difference. So I'll go ahead and select the eyes. And rather than a preset, I'm just going to go ahead and um, choose an iris here. I'm actually a mix of kind of a blue green and a light blue. And let's get in a little bit closer. Let's see what we can do to uh, blend these colors a little bit. More desaturated in gray, maybe a little more green, something along these lines. So there we go. Um, now we can still do some more of our metahuman uh, adjustments. So in the custom mesh panel, uh, right now we are set up for all regions of this being based on the scan. So what's happening under the hood here is um, there are the various, if I hit blend, you can see all these various uh, metahumans that uh, form up. Uh, each one of these is like a zygote that um, helps define the overall shape of a head. And um, there is going on here a blend of those plus then a deformation that's applying the uh, any offsets from the uh, the blend of metahuman zygotes versus the uh, 3D scan. So if we want, we can say, all right, bring the top of the head a little bit closer to, well, just, just go back to the zygote so that none of those spikiness on the top of that scan has anything to uh, drive that head. And we, again, we can just see if there's any subtlety. I'll actually stick with the scan for this. Uh, another thing we can do is we can enable editing where we can actually uh, go through more adjustments of this. So I'm going to enable editing and it's good to duplicate and unlock. So what this will do is make a copy of that uh, original output from the plugin. And in fact, I'm going to go ahead and rename this and just call this uh, VO1. And uh, let's see, what are we going to do here? So I've enabled editing, so I can go into the blend mode. And instead of blending here, I'm just going to go right to Sculpt. And this gives our MetaHuman Sculpting Tools control over what we're doing. And so you know, I could maybe make this nose a little narrower, maybe pull in this these cheeks and uh, jaw a little bit, you know, kind of uh, more idealize myself for ha perhaps, but you get the idea is that now you, we can uh, adjust the overall shape and uh, get this looking the way we'd like. And that's it. At this point, uh, this is a fully articulated metahuman. I can hit two to go to full body and uh, this can be exported to Unreal. It could also be uh, exported into Maya for, for their animations and modifications. So that is the overall process to start from a real live living human head and uh, use photogrammetry to create a uh, metahuman. Hope this helps. Till next time, have fun.